everybody. Welcome back to another segment of Women at Embed. And I am super, super excited because today I am speaking with an icon herself, Lori Schneider, who is Executive Vice President of AMOA. And this is one of the major organizations in our industry that work with attractions, amusement, family entertainment, and the industry players therein on um, some of the kind of think tanks, if you will, like the Jerry Marolas from Foundation University. Um, and they put on these massive expos like a music amusement expo that was held this March. And it was the last event that we attended. So Lori, it's wonderful to have you with us today. Yes. Well, thank you for having me. Excellent. And so um, as everybody knows, the intent of Women at Embed is to shine a light on some of the industry players and leaders such as yourself in these organizations um, in which they're, they're females and they have amazing gender parity. And in fact, I was on your website and I saw the team that you have as well. And I thought, wow, what a, a wonderfully beautiful, balanced organization. And so what I wanted to do is just to ask you a few questions just to tell your story. And the first one would be, and the first one would be just that. So Lori, tell us your story. Like, how did you get into amusement? How did you get into this area? Okay. So actually back, way back in 19, what, 83, when I started my career, I was, um, I was an admin and I was looking for a job and I just so happened to land at a trade association. And I landed in their meetings and events department um, assisting the director of that department. And so I was there for 10 years and, and this was a large organization. We had the second largest trade show in the United States at that time. Okay. And so um, over those 10 years, I was responsible for putting together the new product exposition that took place at their major trade show. Um, there were 70,000 attendees at that show. There were 20, or not 20, 2,000 entries in that new product exposition. And, and then I also um, managed two major conventions for a couple thousand people each year. And then at that time, we had um, pavilions that we would put together because we were trying to help US manufacturers to get into the global marketplace. And I mean, today that just seems like, you know, really? But, um, but at that time, you know, it, we would set everything up so that they could communicate with um, you know, people abroad in different countries. So, so I did that for 10 years and I absolutely loved it. Um, and then decided to take a little um, hiatus to raise my family. I have three children and they're all grown now. But, um, but then in 2004, I was ready to head back to the work world and uh, landed in AOMOA as a meeting planner. And so I started out there meeting planning and um, actually, in I think it was 2008, I attended the AMOA Notre Dame program with um, our members and went through that program. And I was so inspired. You know, the passion of our members is just incredible. Right. Um, the passion we have for their business. You know, we all know it's it's you're like family when you're in this industry. That's right. And I was at Notre Dame. Um, it really kind of took me to that next level and, and hearing about their challenges that they have in their businesses. And right. so after attending that, I started to take interest in getting involved in other aspects of um, the association. And Jack Kelleher, the executive director at that time, you know, was very, um, you know, gracious in, in letting me kind of develop in, in that way and get involved in things. And then I became the director in 2010. So then fast forward to 2016, um, Jack decided to, to move on. And so I felt, you know, ready to, to move into that role. And, and I, I think what I was excited about was helping AMOA transition kind of to the next generation um, into technology. And um, it's just really been the last four years has been great working with our board and just seeing all of that come to fruition. Absolutely. Wow. Fascinating. Okay. So you know what, you know what I love about the, the story that you just shared with me 
is how you came into the industry and the different roles that you held. Um, and, and I think this is, this is a reoccurring theme that I hear in many of the stories uh, that I've heard from different women within the industry. And that is that they followed their curiosity and they followed and, and they did the, you know, the best that they could in whatever role they were at any given time. And then something piqued their interest, whether it was like yourself at Notre Dame University hearing um, some of the, just hearing the industry and what the industry was talking about, and what was important to them, what were their pain points, et cetera. Or just even um, putting on some of the events that you put on and just looking at, you know, what worked, what didn't work. How do we elevate this? How do we embrace technology to take ourselves to another level? And all mm -hmm. of that without knowing What's fascinating is all of that without knowing is curating, right? It's curating the path, your professional right. path that you're taking and is leading to the next thing and is leading to the, the ultimate next thing that then arrives and, and, and the opportunity that arrives. And so um, I, I, I love that. And I've, and I've heard that from quite a few other um, women within the industry where they said, well, I didn't realize that when I was working on this, that it was going to take me to this, but they just followed their intellectual curiosity while hustling. Very, very Absolutely. Hard.